morning. So, morning. so <coughs> we have uh, concluded the ACLS for the adult resuscitation. All algorithms we have continued and uh, we have completed that. Now uh, we will uh, discuss as we discussed before pediatric advanced life support. So pediatric advanced life support, uh, there are certain changes that you need to remember. Since you have already gone through your adult resuscitation algorithms, it will be much easier for you to understand this. It will be because the algorithm almost the same, but there are certain changes that you need to look into. So that is the only thing that you need to remember. So when we started the BLS, we initially had the first class on chain of survival. So similarly in pediatric advanced life support, we have to understand the chain of survival. It is the same, but there are one or two small, small changes that you need to remember. So uh, as for like adult, you have an in-hospital chain of survival and an out-of-hospital chain of survival for cardiac arrest. So in hospital cardiac arrest and out of hospital cardiac arrest, you have two uh, chain of survival. So let's see first one, the in hospital cardiac arrest uh, chain of survival. So you have total six chains that needed to be continuously followed up. If there is any break in the chain, that is going to affect the patient care. So that should not happen. So the chain should not be broken at any point of time. So in hospital cardiac arrest, as we seen in the adult cardiac arrest, the first step is the early recognition and prevention. So as I told before, before a cardiac arrest happens, there are certain signs that you will be able to find out. Something like the patient will have bradycardia or hypotension. So what is early recognition is that you should have an warning system, what we can call pediatric early warning system, PEWS, PUS, that is what commonly used, pediatric early warning score or system where the staff who are is taking care of the patient, uh, if there is some changes in the vital signs, suppose imagine that the saturation was 96, 97, the child saturation is only 85. So there are certain triggers that they have given. So whenever the saturation falls down below 94 percentage or whenever the heart rate goes above or below this thing, you have to activate an emergency system wherein a team of doctors and paramedics are rushing to the patient and they are recognizing what is going wrong in this patient and they are preventing the child from going into a cardiac arrest. See, like in adult patient where they we will see a lot of cardiac arrest. In children, we won't see that much of cardiac arrest initially. What we will see here more of peri before arrest, there can be certain scenarios where you recognize that properly, the child will not go into cardiac arrest. Certain scenarios like hypotension, there can be hypoxia. If you recognize that and treat, the child will not go into cardiac arrest because they have got some good physiological reserves as compared to an adult patient. So like in an uh, adult patient, if like 30 percentage of your blood loss is there, they will go into hypotension. But pediatric will have little bit more like 40 percentage. So little bit more reserve is there. But once they start deteriorating, you will not be able to revive them back. So to recognize that, and preventing from going into cardiac arrest is the priority number one. So that is what we need to remember. So preventing the cardiac arrest is very, very important. So preventing the cardiac arrest, what you have to do is early recognition and you have to prevent the child from going into cardiac arrest. So immediately you recognize that, okay, this is a sick child. The child is going into hypotension. So you can immediately shift the child to an ICU and you can uh, do the uh, further management in the ICU. So that is what uh, the out of hospital cardiac arrest says. So the next thing what you have to see is the activation of the emergency response. So activation of the emergency response is again that you need to see that whenever a child is unresponsive and child is brought into you, you have to immediately activate the emergency system wherein, one second, okay. We have to immediately activate the emergency response system where a team of people are coming and rescuing the child. So that is a separate thing. What I told initially is the pediatric early warning scoring system. You should early recognize and a team of people should run into rush into the patient and should take care of that patient. And when a cardiac arrest occurs, you have to early recognize it and you have to start CPR. See, the problem here in uh, a pediatric resuscitation is that sometimes the child might have cardiac arrest. You are not witnessing the cardiac arrest. Sometimes you are witnessing the cardiac arrest. Similarly, things can happen in adult also. 
but there is no separate witness and unwitness algorithm for pedi uh, in adult but in pediatrics there is a little bit difference when you are witnessing a cardiac arrest what do you need to do in front of you when you have somebody is already collapsed on the floor you are going there and somebody is lying down on the floor so what to be done there are little bit differences that i will teach you when we go into those algorithms so remember that you have to early recognition in the prevention is the first chain second is the activating the emergency response and here again the third one is the high quality cpr so high quality cpr whatever we have said there it holds good here also but only thing one is the compression depth and the rate of compression when you have a single rescuer what is the rate when there is more than one rescuer what is the ratio you have a subtle changes that we will all see in the algorithm so start with high quality cpr and immediately for an advanced resuscitation where all in your defibrillator advanced airway management drugs and all those things will come and post cardiac arrest care and recovery so these are the phases for an in hospital cardiac arrest which we have already discussed in adult but here it is pediatric early warning score there it is an adult early warning score that is the only difference so but in a pediatric this one is the most important chain of survival you have to recognize and you have to prevent the child from going into a cardiac arrest but once the child goes into a cardiac arrest rest for all the same you have to start advanced resuscitation call for help advanced high quality cpr advanced resuscitation and post recovery phase and everything is the same next is the out of hospital cardiac arrest out of hospital cardiac arrest what you have to do there is something called as in limb there is a some difference called as preventive limb so prevention so what do you mean by prevention of a cardiac arrest so what you can do in a out of hospital cardiac arrest see simple thing what you have you have an you are going or with your family members maybe with your elder sibling to a um, park okay so there is a pond there okay there is a large pond there where we can do boating and all those things but you suddenly saw that one child is going and jumping into that fell down onto the pond so how can we prevent that so by making a proper parapet sort of a thing maybe a ring around those thing we can prevent a cardiac arrest so child has drowned and he had developed a cardiac arrest so you should make sure that there are child friendly areas so whenever it's a child friendly area what does it mean it is basic prevention is there when you go to a mall and all there will be child play areas where they can go and play for 2 hours 3 hours so you have to see that they have designed in such a way that when they fall down also they are not getting injured so if they are falling down and getting injured means there is no point in doing this so that is the most important thing you have to have a child friendly areas and you have to prevent the child from going into a cardiac arrest that is the one most important thing for out of hospital cardiac arrest so all these areas wherever you can bring on the child they should be very clearly said you have see child friendly restaurants you can have child friendly restaurants there are areas where you can safely take the child every amusement park you, when you go to an amusement park they will say okay no child children are not permitted because this height is needed so that is a preventive strategy so all those things should be making rather than but in a local maybe there is a festival going on there is a ride that is going on there is no preventive strategy is being done so there is no safety in taking your child and asking them to go in that ride so wherever you are doing that there should be adequate prevention and authority should make sure that these things are already being done so that is prevention then rest everything is the same activating the emergency response high quality cpr advanced resuscitation post cardiac arrest care and recovery so the chain of survival like what we discuss in the adult this is what are the components of a chain of survival in a pediatric age group now the next algorithm what i am wanted to show you this is pediatric bls for lay rescuers why i wanted to teach you here is that you will be going and taking classes for lay people so for general public so during that time there are certain points that you need to remember when asking them to check a pulse and all might be difficult because they don't know how to check a pulse but for a paramedic you know how to check a pulse for every lay person it might be little bit difficult so what are the basic algorithm for uh, doing a lay rescue cpr in a child so this is very simple you have step 1 step 2 and step 3 that's the only thing that you need to remember step 1 the child has become unresponsive make sure that the scene is safe check to see if the patient if person is awake and breathing normally that is only thing you tell them to check whether the patient is having breathing or he is responding the patient is not responding you move on to step 2 so what is step 2 step 2 is basically if you are alone there are two things if you are alone if you have more help more people around you you can call for help shout for help and you can activate the emergency response but 
again in this uh, situation what is the problem is that our emm is in india is just developing only so when you call for a uh, ambulance service it might take for them to come there but rather than you can have an emergency help by taking in a nearby vehicle and bringing them to the hospital so that is a system that we need to develop the ems system need to improve so what you can do is that if you are alone you just give 30 compression you teach them that just give 30 compressions followed by two rescue breaths so uh, you are alone 30 rescue breaths followed by 30 compression followed by two rescue breaths and uh, then what you have to do you have to then go and get an AED if it is available see where all you will get an AED in general public it's a very limited areas only we can get an AED when you consider there can be a big mall where it's available or maybe in the airport maybe in some railway station but ideally an AED should be available in all public places but that is not happening because that is a difficulty what we face because the system need to improve so if you have an AED you go and get an AED after giving 30 compression but you don't have an AED so you don't have any uh, access to telephone or anything you continue giving CPR so that is the only thing that you need to do so if you are alone with a cell phone phone 911 perform CPR 30 compression and what is 911 is basically the US number it is not available in India so 911 you don't need to tell them so what you need to teach them is that you understand that it's a cardiac arrest you start cpr 30 is to 2 and you call for help you get some help if you have a mobile phone or whatever is available you call for help that is the most important thing so that is the only thing that is step 2 and step 3 every repeat cycles of 30 is to 2 you teach them 30 is to 2 so what is the thing is that there is no pulse check here what we have learned so what we can call this as a hands only cpr so this is otherwise called as hands only CPR. We are just using hands and we are not using any other device. Hands only CPR. If you have an AD, you can connect through that AD. There is no pulse check here. So what? A patient become unresponsive, call for help and see whether the patient is responding, not responding, start CPR at a ratio of 30 to 2. And method of giving compression for a child, what do you have to do? You can use our normal method by either with two hands or with a single hand. And what you have to remember that 2 inches is what the depth that you need to go beyond. And in an infant, you can use the two finger method. So that we will learn when we are going for the uh, BLS algorithms. You can use the two finger method or thumb encircling method, whichever method is comfortable for you. But you have to make sure that one and a half inches is depth or you can remember that see, this is the chest wall. One third of the chest wall is compressed. So one third of the chest is getting compressed, one third in an infant so continue cpr until the emergency medical survey arrives so this is for lay rescuers this is for lay rescuers which you need to teach them when you are going and teaching in the public you can just teach them the hands only cpr so you don't need to confuse them with the pulse check and all those things what do you need to tell them a patient becoming unresponsive in front of you check for response now response call for help start compression at a rate of 30 to 2 how much depth and technique should be taught to them very clearly. So the technique is what is more important. You have to teach them how to give compression, where to give compression. All those things is the priority one. So uh, that is your layer of scale. So what we have covered today is just two simple algorithms. One algorithm is the chain of survival algorithm, which we already discussed in the other. But there are certain changes in pediatric. And the second one is the pediatric B, uh, BLS for layer of skewers. So for uh, general public this is what you need to teach them so there is no complications for them no pulse check nothing just teach them this this is more than enough okay thank you